Where do all the boxes go? Long time passing. Now, who wrote the original melody of that song? Don't say. Do you know? It's, um, it's, it's a great protest song from back in the days. I bet so many knows. I love, I love some of those old hippie protest songs. Like Bob Dylan, this group, some of the other ones that I'm not going to say. For a second, I thought you were going all like, you know, Paula Cole, where have all the boxes gone? No, I'm not doing that. No, this is a great protest song. But, but another song, before we get into the topic of today, is um, what's the song? It's like, do you want to taste it? Like, do you want to taste it? It's one of the greatest songs getting out, and it's blown up virally. This is the song for the intro for Peacemaker. Okay. Right now. And this is a Norwegian glam metal band. This song was released in 2010. And they are awesome. It's called, I think it's Wigwam. Yeah, Wigwam is the name of the band. So check out Wigwam. They're really fun, and this is the best part of the story. Because I, the, two days before this Peacemaker came out, and the intro is amazing. It's okay. amazing. Two right. days before the intro came out, um, their booking agency and other groups dropped the band. <laughs> <laughs> That's Losers. priceless. That, I, I mean, that this. is kind of priceless. No, and like, I think the lead singer was like, you shouldn't drop us. I just wait a couple more days. I'm just doing the accent. I don't know what it sounds like. I'm just having fun. I'm thinking the Swedish chef, just having fun. Um, but and then they're like, no, no, we're gonna drop. He's like, okay, it's just all right, fine, it's fine. Except everybody's nice in Northern Europe. Just everybody's just friendly. <laughs> Every time I meet a Northern European, it's like we're the friendliest people ever. It's very cold. Nice to meet you. I'm wearing shorts and 20 degree weather. It's true. It's Fahrenheit, it's not balmy. Celsius. You weirdos. Balmy. Um, <laughs> but anyway, check out. The, just even if you don't want to watch Peacemaker, which is a brilliant show. Watch the introduction. There, he has his, his mascot is named Eagly. It's an eagle. It's wonderful. And they have this crazy dance. And they, I was really, why did they do this dancing? And James Gunn's just, he, he did the show. He's like, just because I wanted to show how ridiculous and fun the show is going to be. America. Yeah. It's a dance. It's a dance breakdown. <laughs> so, it's, guitar boxes. Do you like them? Sure, I do. That's the most important part of any new guitar. Everyone knows that. Now, stop the presses. This isn't a guitar box <laughs> shortage. That's not happening. There's plenty of boxes out there. But we, we hear this from people on the interwebs. We hear it at our shop sometimes. But we hear it, people complain about Guitar Center. And I'm going to get Guitar Center's back on this one a little bit. But nope. everyone's like, why did my guitar box not have the original box with it? I'm angry. Now, let's take a minute. That sink in if that's you that I'm talking to right now. Do you like guitar stores? Do you like guitar stores? I do. I like I do guitar too. Stores. So, have you been to a guitar store before? There's usually hundreds of guitars on the walls. Yes. Correct? And you're seeing most of the guitar store. There's usually a storeroom in the back yes. where we can store things. We have multiple little ones because we're in an old casino that's been converted from 1912. It's true. To, so, our. our <laughs> And an old bowling alley. We're actually in an old bowling alley right now. We often complain about our lack of little little closets, no, we spaces. Have little spaces that we've had to create. We just need to build a warehouse one day. One day. So the, it's physically impossible, unless you are Sweetwater, to keep every box. But these are if you are a guitar store, people can go into the guitar store to see said guitars, right. play said guitars, look and smell and try said guitars. They have to come out of the box at some point. Yes. And this box can be broken down and flat packed, yes, but still, there's an endless amount of them. Oh, I mean, even us, right? Like, it's just boxes, boxes, boxes. And, and we do we... keep a lot of our original boxes. For all the custom shops, we keep them. I was going to say, we're pretty good about we, we try. having it. But I mean, yeah, occasionally, you know, when we got, we got okay, we got 179 Fender Custom Shop boxes. And, yeah, well, and, we gotta... and Squires, right. like, we don't. We just can't keep Squire boxes. We're not no. planning on shipping all these Squires. We don't even put them online. No. Just because it just doesn't make us any sense. Yeah. But there, there's just a logistics issue with it. So I just wanted to address it because we get these complaints from like about, not about us, but about other shops. Because there's this idea that if you didn't get it back in the original box, maybe sometimes sealed. I don't think most people don't expect it necessarily to be sealed because they want you to have looked at the guitar. That it's not like a brand, you know, that it's some weird demo or it's store been stock. Used. Or, right. It says this is in on like, you know, a different box and not in the right manufacturer. And like, don't get me wrong, I would prefer it to be the same manufacturer unless that manufacturer uses crappy boxes. Which, that's Some the case sometimes. Or sometimes a box just gets beat to hell in shipping, so obviously we don't want to send it back to you. And, and we always send our Taylor, bo Taylor guitars and Taylor boxes, but Martin has a superior box. They do. It's just a better box. We don't send our Taylors and Martin boxes because people want to get in their Taylor box. But I have sent 
other guitars in other boxes. I think I have shipped a Squire before. I put it in a Fender American box, and the person who got it was livid. He also has serious mental issues, I found out later, I think, just from the email chain that we had over a Squire. Um, but I mean, like, you know, like, like Gretsch. He was an hour away. That's true. Oh. <laughs> Which is really bad. I'm like, wow. I would, I would always, I yeah. I would have just driven this. Go day. drive, get your, get your guitar. But, like, like, Gretsch has the best non-hard case boxes. Gretsch do, do you know I mean? phenomenally well. It's really weird. But they're coming from overseas. And those, and Gretsch's, they're shipped overseas, usually direct to Fender and then direct to us without being inspected. Right. You know, the only one that actually inspects their guitars is PRS. Yeah. From the overseas thing. I think they get their guitars, check it out, and then, send it out then to all to the person. No, but it's just it's just not possible to keep them all. Now, if you want to buy a guitar that's never really been inspected, even though you think it has been at one of these major retailers, like Amazon, if you buy a guitar on Amazon, it's 90% never been looked at. Yeah, probably true. If you buy a guitar at some of these other major manufacturers, there's a huge percentage that it's not been looked at either. It, um, it might have been popped to make sure the guitar's in there, but it's not had a real playthrough. It's not had a real inspection. That doesn't happen as much as people think. There's, there's some companies that get the guitars. We've talked about it before. They get it, something's damaged with it, goes back to the manufacturer, goes back to a different retailer after a quick inspection. It's never reopened again. It just sits on the shelves until somebody clicks and buys and ships out. So what I was saying earlier, I think, if you want to have the experience of being able to go into a guitar store, <laughs> play a guitar, you, it's a weird thing to then be like, well, I'm going to complain that I can't get boxes. Yeah, you, you can't have both ways. I can't. Right? Yeah, I want the exact. It's just, it, again, it's not. Because you worked at Guitar Center. And like, and I remember when I was a young kid, I was like, oh, can I get the box for this amp? If you buy an amp on the floor, they're like, yes. They've said yes. And then I saw this like, this is when I was 15. I remember this. Like, I remember this visibly. I remember like watching the guy go, yeah, let me go see if I can find it. I was like, oh, that should be easy. It's just right behind that door, right? Tell us. Where's that box? I mean, you have a, there's a giant warehouse. If, if, if there even is the box, probably there's not anymore if it's, it's the end. Or the original, I mean, like, like, I want the pamphlet that says how to operate my Fender twin. I mean, I'll tell you, like, just, just let's say that you buy a guitar. This was, this was always, like, the nightmare scenario. People come in, they buy a guitar. And sometimes in Guitar Center, there is one in the box in the back. And then we're not talking, like, super high end. We're talking a, you know, a made in Mexico Fender or a Squire or something, right? Sometimes there is one back there in the box. Grab you. Here you go if you're fine with that. Whatever. But let's say you bought a guitar that is in the case. <laughs> so, like, we had, you know, 20, 30 feet up shelving in a warehouse. And so what would happen is the case would be in that box, and it would have the last four of the serial number. So you would be in there just, like, looking. With the binoculars. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 0485. <laughs> 0485. And then you'd get the ladder. And you climb up. And it just, you know, inevitably things get lost. Things get misplaced. They get put in the wrong section. Someone copies the number wrong. Someone gives the wrong case. You know what I mean? Like, we have the same model, but it's the different one that came in. It's just, just inevitably, those things happen. And that's not even a slam on Guitar Center. It was just, it's such a it's large with, number of guitars. We have the same issue. Like, we you know? don't have as many guitars at Guitar Center, but we have multiple case rooms and we have another right. building that's actually next door that we have cases in there too. So we have to walk next door when someone checks out on certain guitars Right. and get, it's just, this is how cases take a lot of space. Though. Cases take a ton. All and then, yeah, if you try to add boxes to all those, like we couldn't store ours in boxes like that. It would just be, it would be insane. We couldn't do it. No, I mean, room. Chuck Levins has a, a huge basement vault. Yeah. It's like the French catacombs. There's some dead bodies down there too. I guarantee it. But um, but that, that's just the guitars that aren't even in the showroom. Yeah, that stay in the boxes, in the cases. They photograph them <laughs> for like, like secret. <laughs> there's stuff from like I remember going down to the Carlos. There was like he was like here's a Gibson from 1965 in the box. This not I'm just kidding. That's not there. But it'd be like from 2010. <laughs> new old stock. That's how this is how new old stock happens. <laughs> no, it is. It's just like in the box. Like, oh, yeah. It's like, like I had this clothing store called Rue Saint Denis and. Manhattan that I used to shop at all the time and they had all this new old stock clothes from like the 70s and 60s that had huh. never been worn. That's they cool. bought all these warehouses worth of clothes and like that's where all my suits came from. I used to be fly looking back in when I was in my young days when I quite cared and wore suits everywhere. But um, there's all like stuff from like 1972. I was like, just <laughs> that's around. amazing. Like, kind of, never been worn. You have to get them all hemmed and stuff to fit you. <laughs> and people were a lot smaller back then. You could not fit into any of these clothes. No, I would just be naked. Like, I was like struggling. Like, <laughs> tighter, tighter. This my penis is not breathing. <laughs> yes, penises have to breathe. Um, so anyway, the point of it is, if you like guitar stores, 
and you want to be able to go to them, just cut them some slack every once in a while. It's, it's hard. They can't keep every original piece of thing that comes with a guitar. And, and most, the box. most, the box. now this is not true across the board. There are probably some shady things going on out there, but if it's a reputable shop, they're not trying to screw you or like send you no some weird, you. like, you know, used guitar. They're trying to take care of you. They probably made the best choice available and are, think they're sending you the box that is like the best thing to protect that guitar. Nothing. They're not trying to like pull it. I've fast actually one. shipped a Fender in a Gretsch box before. We have the Gretsch box is better. Like for like the yeah, we're gonna stuff. pick the best box that it's that awesome. we feel like is protecting your the, your guitar. The best protection, and then especially if it's a non-hard, like it's not shipping in a hard case, especially. Hundred percent. Yeah. I think that sums it up. I hope you click subscribe, that bell, the ding-alongs, and all that fun stuff the as ding -alongs. well. Ding-alongs. The ding-alongs. Anything else you want to add to it? Great name. Good to go. I think we're good to go. Check. Roger Rabbit. <laughs> Let's see him, Derek. <laughs> we'll see I you guys next time. <laughs> Thank you, Star Power. <laughs> uh.